Good morning. Today we discuss electronic data interchange EDI. There's formats of EDI, a defect, introduction to enterprise business planning software, MRP, how the ERPs evolve from manufacturing resource planning software, uh, that's ERP. One then the, we go for supply chain management, customer chain relationship management, and all this. And uh, latest, we have some formats of exchange of data format. When the Basically, EDI starts in 1970s and 80s in United States, Europe, and Germany. This country has one country with uh, Tokyo uh, in Japan. So they basically the big companies uh, they they are each other uh, supplier vendors. So they always uh, instead of manual order, they uh, better to talk to computer to computer. So they generate the order and give it to over a packet network service. At that time, you remember internet was not there. Internet is mainly developed in 1996, 97, 98. At that time, internet is not there, but the uh, uh, packet service, packet switch network was there, X25 network is there. Um, uh, so they generally uh, uh, ordered this, uh, uh, this uh, information in a packet, in a packet, uh, data packet, and there's some appropriate software, and that particular network of uh, software is network of hardware and software is maintained as a value added network. And before internet, uh, the value added network came. Uh, the first, the Ethernet uh, protocol and all these things, then Aloha network, you remember the networking class in the 70s, then in come the packet switch network all over USA and Europe and uh, they basically use the X25 protocol, 64 kbps X25 protocol. At that time, graphics is not transferred. Uh, so, that is it. We see it. Say, so, EDI is uh, nothing but say booking instruction, shipping the, all the this follow up schedule, booking confirmation, tracking, uh, bill of lading. Bill of lading is whenever you are shipping at the shipping point, you have to declare what are the items to be there, invoice to be generated and the customer. So, all these all these processes uh, is mapped uh, not only your customer, customer, vendor and bank and the customs house, clearing house, they should talk each other over the not internet. Remember, internet was not there. Uh, they are generally all subscribed to same van, value network. Big van is there in India. That kind of hand is handled by VSNL, Videsh Sanchan Nigam Limited. I have some experience with, with them. Uh, then uh, in America, the AT&T is there. So uh, sending company data in internal format, EDI is, a, EDI is another software day because every company have their own legal, legal system. You probably know that it, one they have different computer, another a different computer. Uh, it is the duty of the value added network. They have a separate computer. They translate to their format, maybe EVCDIC format to ASCII format. The you know various format are there. So EDI data. This is the so X25 network and EDI data and receiving company. And remember, it is not like our email. Though you think it is like email, no, because email anybody can. Uh, if I know your address, I can shoot up your email. But here it is not possible. Here I have to know which are the messages I can send to you. These are the all standard has to be maintained by van. So you cannot, it's unnecessary message you can think you cannot send it to. So there is some legalized framework maintained by van, value added network. So order processing without here definitely there is some human involved, there is a late delay and here it is faster. This is EDI using value added network that I mentioned that it is generally uh, 70s, 80s, still 90s, even initial, still it is there. It is not that because it is give more protective service, not everybody goes on internet, value added network still there. Uh, this set the facilities. High cost is there, you have to pay the cost because they maintain their own hardware, software, their manpower. Yes, they have electronic mailbox. I central clearing house, secure and private and, you, and, and at the end of it an internet you cannot 
ask anything but here this evaluated network you can always uh, can always help text is there that is great and not only other help text any dispute between the suppliers and vendors they they have them standing so that is the thing so this is uh, uh, how the erp comes erp first come materials requirement planning within a first computation done within a big company that is they have a big costly machine how to utilize this machine for to get the maximum order delivery and you have resources also how to plan it so it is it is generally done by a big computer a mainframe computer at most of the companies at that time mini computer was not there later on is my mini computer change so what are your demand and all these things a part of what are you then you can generate the purchase order work order work up to actually what is to be done at the plant and you should all this thing with mrp software it is the starting point it is uh, in 60s and 70s this is a standard now it is still also there but now it is a in a uh, separate format here a typical procurement cycle i can i can take it from uh, acp like uh, uh, determination of requirements like whether various bo Uh, department will say raise requirements then i have to say which source determination i have a software this is uh, okay i am going from mrp software to now erp software mrp to mrp to and then erp it is a more uh, take care of accounts also main difference between mrp and erp is it takes care accounts is takes care sales is take care production planning more or less a big manufacturing company what are else are there all are in Uh, included in a single software and on a single monolithic hardware also it is generally runs on a mainframe computer or mini computer and the now, at that time the leading software was sap right now also there so this is a sap software everything is built in even these are all built in from scratches they use their own uh, coding abap4 and all this thing yeah this is a central database it you can think of any non uh, relational database non uh, rdbs at the at that time non relational database is not there it is relational database it is acp generally prefer oracle so oracle is the database but acp write the whole middle intelligence layer and it takes care of every data they put into their into their own encryption this is i have already mentioned the edi service this is a uh, EDS service giving this is a virtual private network. Uh, it is so that encryption and all this thing can be given. So that's it. This is EDI is basically with OSI layer seven architecture or layer seven protocols, and that is available. You can see and transport layer. Now it is now converted to internet. Now we'll see it. All these things can be transferred to internet uh, through not a defect. a defect is encapsulated in xml maybe it will be more better with json format with rest i will see it yes edi their main two standards one is american standard ansi usa follow these standards and europe follow a defect standard india follow this a defect standard from near 1990 onwards there are several formats are there more or less they are equivalent and evaluated network is the authorized Uh, to convert all these things they are the service like atnt is giving service i have already earlier told videsh sanchan nigam has given this service yeah this is uh, more or less i've cleared this is edi uh, translator this remember this all these messages are layer 7 uh, network layer 7 protocol mm, yes and they are underlying they can use any uh, data layer. there is some little kind of history it in 1987 before that ansi uh, ansi format was there and uh, all the big companies are using this edifex standard edifex is nothing but yeah it edifex is nothing but all the messages they put it in a some interchange envelope remember this is nothing but a, a text envelope uh, and they put the, their messages and there some like kind of a xml data in fact xml come later uh, they put the messages together and sent it and there's some format of the messages like these are the formats message standard syntax every syntax like main main thing is edifact and ansi 
it is not nothing but a like onion track structure so that you can put your data element within a envelope and that that envelope actually pass through say i am giving a next segment here say beginning of the message like it should, should come date time period would be there how many times it can be repeated a uh, name and address so it can be only two times various segments uh, monetary amount all this these are all very explicit uh, in like a message it, it is there now it is all being converted to edifact to xml we will see later on even xml to ebm ex bbxml business xml or then to json also we will see it all these messages because these are the recent development uh, maybe 2010 onwards the, uh, earlier it is uh, xml xml uh, in the earlier to the 2000 to 2000 till now and now more faster is the json format this i have already explained how edi documents is interchanged some strength weakness opportunity threats is there because all messages is there uh, in uh, value added network there is always threat and that is less threat because at that time at least you can respond you can you can pinpoint uh, the value added network they are taking huge money but right now it is all over internet you cannot uh, ask anyone in the internet okay there now it is more you have to be more secure your messages yeah see here the earlier edifact standard right now you can see it here i am took it in 2019 uh, document now it is the xml is uh, is the exchange format uh, between this uh, business document but also edifact is also there ebm xml is there later on we see the json is there yeah this is uh, another layout you can see it interchange how the interchange happens is all basically layer 7 protocol yeah this is uh, i have told beginning this is it starts from materials requirement planning software it is in 60s and 70s then uh, with some little bit of involvement of uh, accounts it will come mrp2 mrp2 then erp erp is full fledged it has everything uh, companies human resource development sales logistics everything is included but not outside environment that will come later so this is the history of erp from mrp software then comes the supply relationship management this is extended erp so supply uh, basically uh, supplier is supplied by supplier any big company like in a car company they are giving parts and the parts is given by sub sub vendors so you have to take care not only your vendors you have to take care your sub vendors sub sub vendors so you have to take care with them uh, the design uh, order everything it is happening in every in, in big industries so when you have a uh, big computer and generally we do not mix it with the erp software because if anything goes wrong because it has to be contacted by the vendors and vendors vendors so it is generally typical different chunk of software and hardware and they separate server at least in sap and they communicate through two servers this is srm software supplier relationship management software there is another piece of software customer relationship management software because customer is the king so whenever the customer rings at any point of time and it can be received by any person at least last all history and everything should be there it should be available there the customer has not to, to repeat that i have called this time that time so all these things how you contact your uh, uh, crm through whatsapp through email through phone so this is a crm software again there, this is a uh, another piece of chunk of software other hardware and software mm, and then erp is the main core and then the uh, supplier relationship management then crm is another kind of software and another hardware it is typically maintained that way uh, so that's it it is a it is then it is called supply chain management whenever you take care of the vendor vendor vendors within your company and the customer relationship management which are all linked with your main erp software and hardware so this is supply chain management uh, this is the this is take form of the uh, everything uh, supply your place customers uh, 
so then we call a subtrial relationship management. Here I took the diagram is one of the best supply chain management relations CRM software is salesforce.com uh, which is cloud based uh, and it is one of the leading software in CRM. It is not only it is cloud based and you can multi tenant. So you can you, this is basically example of the software as a service. So uh, you do not have to buy uh, hardware and software you just buy a service. This is an uh, example of XML, XML you all know. Uh, HTML can only uh, give you the um, data in uh, bigger format or size that is all or whether underline or not, but XML you can uh, give you can define your own tag. So, XML is that way uh, more functional. So, XML is the good uh, alternative from AD fact. Uh, in fact, all the AD fact messages can be converted and is converted to XML format. I think you all know. XML has certain uh, definitely some advantages of it is case sensitive uh, and it is also viewable if proper style sheet is there. HTML also viewable, but HTML is not case sensitive. This is you typically like HTML declaration, XML declaration is there. Is there you have to say which type of document, so whether it is a purchase order, whether it is a bill, so all these things. So, you can put your tag. This is the way the nowadays AD fact data has been already converted to XML. Now, EBXML, it is a repository service with XML. Uh, this is also a very popular service nowadays. Now, we come to a latest one that is called the uh, XML is generally uh, protocol using SOAP, uh, object access protocol, simple object access protocol and now we have a much faster REST API which is much faster, there are some pros and cons of it. REST is a like a, say it is, it is, it is like an envelope and REST is a faster, it's like a postcard. So, transmission is easier, lightweight can be cached. So, right now REST API with JSON is the most popular format for information exchange. But there are some pros and cons to it, we will see it. Yeah, the same thing I mentioned, same thing I mentioned here. Uh, the application and the rest is like a postcard, the same. I just repeated picture so that one can understand very well. Same, nothing much. Uh, this is uh, two difference, Var uh, it is Varvas. So, SOAP is Varvas, heavily payload is there, suitable for enterprise web services where you need interoperability, uh, transaction, message delivery and reliability. They are, this is restful web service, not Varvas. Uh, this is faster, but there is some uh, good point in SOP also. SOAP advantage is widely used, supported, it is came earlier, uh, support variety of protocols, rest of a simple realize of the HTTP and HTTPS, it is not mentioned, uh, many sites support both roast, uh, SOAP and RESTful, like Amazon, ABI. Uh, same thing, uh, certain points are common, uh, REST are uh, certain things are extra, so on certain things are extra, SOAP is more enterprise oriented. So, another way you can uh, rest is say not much reliable, so, uh, SOAP is uh, a service oriented architecture uh, that can be used for middleware interpreters. so it is a much rugged one. REST is basically architecture designed for web based communication assuming only point to point, that I told like a postcard, request standard tools with middleware, every middleware is there web service description language as built in error handling does not say, but it is managed by another layer. See it uses built in protocol, yes, use HTTP and TLS that is enough, this is good, TLS is good enough. Um, I think, yeah. So, uh, where, where is for SOAP, SOAP is more enterprise oriented. Uh, it can cater all, rest is faster, that is all. Now, come to the uh, instead of JSON, XML is also that way, uh, XML is being replaced by JSON, JSON is much faster, uh, like uh, JSON is smaller size, XML is bit uh, heavier, like the same information XML it is written is here, it is like a com, uh, example with a Java with a Python, but Python no bracket is there, it is more readable, this is XML version, this is JSON version, 
it is more readable, it is lighter. There are some good points of JSON and XML. These are the standard framework of uh, information exchange that starts from a defect. JSON supports string integer now, JSON native data and all, it supports with JavaScript and all. So, where we lie now, there is uh, one is a REST protocol which is nowadays is favored which is faster and another is SOAP which is developed around 2000-2010. Uh, more or less this is the future of the uh, global supply chain management. Uh, so, thank you for viewing.